<laughs> Welcome back to Gentleman's Corner, guys. My name is David. Uh, today I have a Splendid Saturday video for you. I've got quite a few things to talk about. First, let us jump into the channel update. Since it has been a while since we've had one. Mm. Before we get uh, started... Today I'm smoking a little bit of Cult Blood Red Moon. This is going to be the next pipe tobacco review on the channel. So far, um, you know what? I'm going to save it for the review. So the channel currently is at 52 subs. Or, excuse me, 52. 582 subs, uh, which is the highest we've ever been, and we are consistently growing. So that is a positive thing to see, and I'm very happy to see that kind of growth. Some of you may or may not have watched a new segment that I am doing on the channel called Gentleman Eats, um, and I'll get into that in a second. Um, and then, like I said, Cult Blood Red Moon is going to be the next pipe tobacco review. Um, I am looking at other blends to be reviewing. Um, I'm in kind of a buying shortage right now. So I'm uh, in the process of putting together a list of some budget blends to take a look at. So let's get into before we go any further. <clears throat> let's talk about Gentleman Eats. Um, posted Gentleman Eats a week ago, and it was the very first one dealing with coffee as a classic gentleman's uh, drink. What Gentleman Eats is, is a program I've been talking about on the channel and I've been thinking about even longer. Um, and the whole idea is, for those of you who have watched Alton Brown's Good Eats, something along those lines and inspired by that format, but geared towards foods that are typically associated with classically elegant gentleman's aesthetic. Um, I've already got a couple of more episodes lined up that will be re are releasing over the next several weeks. Uh, and those will be for foods such as classic cocktails and creme brulee. Uh, so just, you know, little things like that. It's not going to be, you know, every single week that there's going to be a Gentleman Eats episode. Um, you know, this is primarily a tobacco channel. And so, you know, these are just little segments that I'm interspersing just to kind of break up the monotony. Uh, you know, it, it's all well and good reviewing pipe blends, but sometimes it does get a little bit monotonous for us that are creators. Uh, because, you know, this is not all that we do. This is not our entire life. So, just a little something to mix it up uh, and keep things fresh on the channel. All right, so getting into the rest of today's topics. Uh, tobacco news. Um, say, when, when was the last time I did a Splendid Saturday? It was a few weeks ago. Um, tobacco news updates. Of course, the big thing that everyone's talking about right now, the return of the Dunhill blends. Um, STG has acquired the rights to the Dunhill pipe tobacco blends um, from British American Tobacco. Uh, they've acquired the trademarks and the recipes now, I know Bradley over at Stuff and Things was in the process of getting in touch with um, the, I think it was the marketing director over at STG to try and figure out a little bit more information about this because all we really know right now is that the rights to the blends have been acquired and uh, STG is going to begin producing them under one of their other brands. Um, so it will no longer be, you know, Dunhill's blank. It will be some other brand's blank. Um, whether it's Elizabethan mixture or uh, Navy Rolls. So still don't know all the story on that. We're still in the process of figuring that out. I can't wait to see if Bradley does get a response and what the response is. Other than that, not a whole lot going on. Um, a couple of other states have raised their tobacco ages to 21. Uh, this is a trend that we have been seeing for several years, and it's no surprise. Um, it's not to say that the news is welcome. 
but it's not a surprise. Okay. Ah, uh, what else we got? What else we got? Oh, oh. How could I forget this? A couple weeks ago, I ran a poll asking you, the viewers, um, on my Instagram and Twitter accounts, what y'all thought about the Rocky Patel Vintage Series and doing the series on that brand and series of cigars. There wasn't a whole lot of feedback. But the feedback that I did receive was mixed. And I would just like to address that here on the channel. So, as I said, I'm kind of in a buying bind right now. For those of you who have not watched the last several Splendid Saturdays, um, about four weeks ago I was uh, let go from my job. And so I've been in a buying freeze right now. Um, and so what that means is until I get something else, which I'm currently in the process of doing, um, I am very limited on the pipe blends that I can acquire. And right now that means I'm not really acquiring anything new. And so it's kind of putting a freeze on the channel a little bit. And so I have uh, a humidor full of cigars that I am slowly working my way through uh, in terms of reviewing just to help keep some content on the channel. Um, I do, I promise you, pipe blends are coming back. The other side of that coin is not just purchasing blends, but the weather here in Texas has been unbearably hot the last couple of months. And for those of you who have tried to smoke in the summer, you know, pipe smoking is something much more uh, better suited to the spring, fall, and winter months, not really the summer, unless you're smoking a cob, and even then, aromatic blends really just don't have the spot in the summer. You want to be smoking vapors, uh, and even English mixes, you, you back away from almost entirely because they just don't fit. <laughs> uh, so, because I only smoke outdoors, um, I have been backing off of my pipe smoking in general. So that's not to say that pipe blends are going away from the channel, but for the time being, they are slowing down just a little bit due to extenuating circumstances. So, but they are going to still be here. Um, and I know I'm going to get some dislikes on this video for that statement, uh, just because there are a lot of people on YouTube that are my viewers that believe this should be a pipe-centered, pipe-tobacco-only channel. So, and to that I say, fooey, because channels can be whatever their makers want them to be. So, and we're willing to, you know, take the hit on viewership, if that's the case, in order to express our creative content. So, it is what it is, you know. And if you're going to unsubscribe because of that, you know, I'm sorry to see you go, but it's a reality that we all live with down here in the South. So, now, recently, I want to tell a little story. And this, this is relevant to, uh, to YouTube in general. And it is relevant to me as well because I, I am also guilty of these sins. Recently, I attended what's called a Continuing Legal Education Seminar here in San Antonio. And while I was attending this seminar, I was noticing a specific trend in the speakers. None of them really appeared to know what the hell they were doing. Um, some of them did. Some of them were very good. Um, but a lot of the younger people that were presenting seem to have an issue with public speaking. And I just wanted to address this because it, it's also a trend that I see here on YouTube, that public speaking and the art of public speaking is kind of a lost art, um, especially in the younger generation. I mean, personally, I am a trained public speaker. Um, I have gone through classes, I have gone through mentorship in order to perfect my public speaking ability. I also worked 
in a position uh, with a organization where I was public speaking every single day and answering live questions. Um, I don't talk about it a whole lot while I'm here on the channel, but I was a educational staff member at SeaWorld. And so <clears throat> I was the guy, if you've ever been to a SeaWorld, they have people that are up by the animal pools with the microphones that are talking animal facts. And I was that person. And so I have this comfort with getting up and speaking in front of people. And I wanted to pass along a few tips and tricks that I have to the younger generation who might be viewing this video on how to better improve your public speaking uh, so that you don't come across as monotone, uneducated, or unknowledgeable about what you're talking about. First off, try to eliminate what are called transitional words. Um, uh, you know, things of that nature. Pause words create a certain lilt in the voice and a certain uh, cadence when you are speaking that is not pleasant to the ear. They provide a bunch of breaks in between the information that you're trying to convey. And when those breaks happen, your audience can lose interest. Secondly, know what you're going to be talking about before you start speaking. And if you need to, rehearse what you're going to be saying. All of these tips and tricks are going to help you become a better public speaker. Uh, one of the things that I am best known for, in my local community anyway, is the fact that I always seem to give very, very consistent speeches. Um, and for the things that I do, usually it's because I have rehearsed what I'm going to say, including my stage choreography, seven to ten times before I actually do it. And so it creates a sense of seamlessness, a sense of confidence in what I am doing. Uh, now, here on the channel, I don't do that. Um, and it's fairly obvious, you know, I'm using pause words here and there throughout even this video. And part of that is because I try to give the channel a much more organic feel than when I am doing professional speaking. So I feel that that's more authentic and more genuine to the purpose and community uh, that the channel is built around here on the YouTube Pipe community. Now, getting into our final topic today, as I spill ash all over myself, <clears throat> you may have noticed that the title of this video is Dying Cobbs. And uh, it is true. If you follow me on Twitter and Instagram, you may have seen that I have been trying to dye a corncob pipe. Uh, my wife has expressed interest in occasionally joining me for a smoke. And... Her favorite color is purple. We'll try finding a purple pipe anywhere for anything less than a couple hundred dollars. So I wasn't going to spend that kind of money on something that she may or may not be interested in long term. And so I started exploring options on coloring cheaper pipes. And what I came to is the fact that you can dye Missouri Meerschaum corncob pipes using Feeding's leather dye. And I wish I had had the foresight to bring some of it out um, so that you could see what it looks like. But there are other videos, um, and, and I'll probably do a demonstration video on how to do this. But I wanted to show you all, this is the results of what I did. Now granted, these did not come out purple. Um, the store that I went to, my local leather store, did, does not carry Phoebe's purple leather dye. So I took royal blue and red and tried to blend them and it didn't quite work out. But this is what it came out to. Uh, so this is a Missouri Meerschaum Diplomat um, with a bent stem. And I really like the stem design on this. So this is how it came out. And all this is, is I took some sandpaper and sanded off 
some of the uh, shellac and plaster finish that was on this pipe. And then took the Phoebe's leather die and put it on um, and then topped it with just a very, very thin coat of spray shellac uh, just to protect the color. So this is what it came out looking like. Well, I did this one and I got a little bit jealous and I have always wanted a royal blue pipe. So I dyed one of my Missouri Meerschaum legends um, with just the royal blue. And I went a little heavy with it so it came out a little dark, but that is what it came out looking like. And uh, I gotta be honest, I am super, super happy with how this came out. Um, and then I put just a little bit of shellac on it just to give it some shine and protect the finish. So, my pipe went out. So, um, I will be doing a demonstration video at some point on how to do this um, that is focused on just dyeing it. And it will be just a very simple, short, step-by-step -step video on how it's done. Um, just so that anyone who wants to be able to do this can try it. There we go. Ah, that first light taste. So, that's all I really have for you guys. Um, just a, a quick update. I know I have been missing as of late, and uh, a lot of it is just the heat here in Texas has been absolutely oppressive, and so filming outside has not really been an option. And uh, I really don't have a whole lot of stuff that I can review that is indoor-oriented. Um, so, uh, right now I'm just kind of dealing with that, but thankfully we had a very nice cool morning today, and so I was able to get out here and film this uh, video for you. So, again, be looking out on the channel for the review of Cult Blood Red Moon. That will be coming out next week, along probably with a new Gentleman Eats video, um, just to kind of keep things interesting and mix it up. Um, I'm gonna be try. I'm gonna try and be more consistent about my Splendid Saturday videos. Um, as many of these as I have done, sometimes I just run out of things to talk about, and I'm, they're not terribly interesting. So um, we will see. But in the meantime, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please hit like. If you'd like to see more of my videos, please hit subscribe. And please do hit the notification button next to the subscribe button. It looks like a little bell, and it will send you a notification anytime I upload a new video. Uh, if you like to connect with me on other social media, and I highly suggest you do, you can find the links to my Instagram and Twitter in the description box below this video. Other than that, guys, this has been a splendid Saturday here on Gentleman's Corner. I hope you're having a splendid Saturday wherever you are and whenever you're watching this. And other than that, have a good one.